think when you come into my room and pretty much look around the room, you can see most of the projects are student-initiated. The direction of this student-based project is to teach biodiversity. We decided to raise smallmouth bass in our classroom for release into the river. So for second graders, we first decided that we needed a question. What do fish need? Fish need oxygen to survive. They need light so they can know where their food is and, and so they can see where they're going. Some fish need rocks and some need um, plants to hide under. Okay. They eat minnows, earthworms, and nightcrawlers. Okay, what do they eat, what do they eat in our tank? Minnows. Minnows. What happened when we put earthworms in? Well, when my brother was here, he, they put earthworms in, they sunk down to the bottom, buried themselves in the back, and then they died and they, and they were germs in the water. And the ammonia content got really high. And we lost some fish and we had to siphon out the water, so we had to problem solve and change to minnows. And we came up with seven things that we thought the fish needed and we created a habitat. Then we did a lot of experiments with it. We did some fish mapping, we found the home range, we changed things in the aquarium to see if changing the habitat would change their home range. So what we're going to do first before we go is I'm going to let you try some stream monitoring at your desk and here's what you're going to do in a group. This is full of river water. Now do you believe that? No. We're going to pretend it is. This is river water and inside the river water we hid something that the bass are going to have to eat. You know what they are, what are they? Macroinvertebrates, and that's what you're going to look for today. Pull one out, look very carefully with your magnifying glass, and see if you can find it on your field identification sheet. Now, what are some things in here that you think you're going to look for? Tell me in macroinvertebrates. Damselflies. Damselflies. Dragonflies, oh. Evan. Mayflies. Mayflies. This is a mayfly. All right, show him. What are you doing? What did you find? Water penny in the cabinet. You found a water penny? You found more clams? We more? found the most crayfish. We found the most crayfish. Yeah. Oh, seriously, we have two more. What is this thing? That's a damselfly. All right, you put a mark on the damselfly. Put him back in the river. So we researched the animals and found out what biodiversity means, that they will get what they need from each other. And then we went to the river to stream monitor to make sure as scientists that all these things that we knew fish needed existed there before we released them. We need to know when we go to the river today if this is really a safe place to release the bass. You're going to see right away that there's enough light, and that there's enough surroundings, we're going to make observations room. and enough room and light. But we have to investigate if the water is clean, if there's diet for the bass, and if it's the right temperature. Because we just can't assume this, can we? Or make an observation or an inference. We have to investigate because we are what? What are we? We are scientists. We need some proof. See how fast this is moving? One of the things the bass likes is what kind of water? Fast. Fast water. Oh, stop and they have to have it. deep pools, so they would like it in I'm here. Like... Daisy, how would you feel about starting to monitor it a lot? I had no idea we were going to do this, so we need some more organ. Okay. Look at him. What is it? What is it? You know, what is it? It's a crayfish. We got a crayfish, Tamila. Did you find anything else? Okay, put it in here, put it in here. If you are lucky enough to create curriculum around environmental study, the motivation to read and write for authentic purposes is a given. It's right here. It's right here. It is a giant water bug. When they see that they're solving problems. Dump them in there. To real life issues. Is it a dragonfly? Yeah. Yeah. And that it makes a difference. The motivation to learn is there. And you can take them as far as you want to go. That giant water bug. Isn't this cool? We journal about all of our science experiments that we do. So we get our writing in that way. We're also reading books. So we have a reading all about the river. In math, we're tallying the macroinvertebrates, and then we will actually log on to the user's site, our information. Then we will compare different internet sites from other user groups, and we'll mathematically figure out the percentage of where we could let them go. I believe a minds on approach is where they need to solve problems to real life issues. Oh, this is a prize. You want to give them everything they need, show them how to learn, then stand back and watch them make you dance their own. I got something, I got something! 